guys, welcome back to Together with Electronics. This is episode number four, and today I'll be showing you guys how to uh, actually design a circuit or a schematic in Altium Designer. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be uh, designing a LED pattern with a microcontroller, and we'll be also using a SPI bit expander. If you don't know what these things are, you don't need to worry. Uh, they're just components, and uh, We'll be using them for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. First uh, up, we'll name our schematic. We place, uh, go to the place tab and click on text string. Uh, then let's name it LED strip and revision number. Let's name it A. Once it's done, uh, we uh, first we need to uh, bring our microcontroller, uh, add the components to the schematic sheet. So to do that, we will be click on the we will click on this uh, button, then choose. Then to find the microcontroller or any specific part, you just click on find. It should open a pop-up window in which you can uh, successfully. Uh, change the name of this uh, component which you are looking for but be sure uh, that this operator is contains and nothing else uh, so we'll be searching for 80 mega 8 which is a microcontroller from Atmel we click on search then you'll see that uh, here uh, the uh, the footprint of this uh, uh, of the package uh, of the uh, component you're using will be displayed here. For this tutorial, we'll be using a um, dip socket or a dual inline package. Uh, so we select one with a dip pattern. We uh, select OK and again. And that should bring our component successfully to the sheet. Uh, now let's uh, add our bit expander. We click on choose. Then go, go to find again. And now we search for MCP S23 S08 and hit search again. And it should bring up the relevant search results. Uh, we'll be using a dip package again. And so we click OK again. And now we place the component where we want. Uh, let's place it here. Should be good enough. Now let's, uh, uh, we'll be connecting eight LEDs to this uh, place. So let's add, um, let's add a, a resistances. So let's say we just uh, take resistance from this corner. This is a handy tool. Uh, you can also get capacitors and all sorts of logic elements here. So uh, it's that should bring our resistance to the, uh, to this front and now you notice that uh, it comes with a weird annotation called res2. It's not, you don't really need it. So you just uh, click on, double click on it and uncheck this box. And it should make it automatically invisible. So now let's move it to the appropriate place. Uh, and then we hit uh, control C to copy this component. And we repeat the process eight times. Okay, so now we have successfully added all eight resistances required for a project. Uh, you can uh, you, you can change these values of the resistances by double clicking here and typing any in any value you want. So uh, now let's go ahead and add the LEDs. We again go to place part, choose, and then under miscellaneous devices, uh, you should find the LEDs somewhere like. Let's see mm, here. Uh, so this is the LED. This is the part we want. So we click on OK and OK again. But one thing we'll notice that if you uh, try to uh, keep the LEDs all at one place, it'll get get a little uh, crowded. So to make your uh, design look more neat and clean, we'll be uh, using a different technique. We'll just place the LEDs in a different place. 
uh, then we'll just remove this uh, thing we don't really need it just uncheck the visible mark and then we just copy it eight, eight times in any place you want okay now you've successfully added all LEDs to, uh, to your design now we select all and just move it to one corner let's say here now uh, we'll be connecting one end of this uh, enter of all the LEDs to ground so we just click the uh, ground power port and we connect it to one LEDs and uh, one LED and then we just drag all the LEDs and connect them to the negative power rail so that should be good enough and now for the power uh, part we'll be connecting each of these pins to this uh, to the output of these resistances let's go ahead and uh, connect these wires that should be cool uh, now we'll be uh, using net labels net, la net labels are a very useful feature for schematic and it actually helps uh, reduce the crowding uh, we'll see in this case we'll just extend this wire a bit in all the cases now is the now comes the magic we co go to uh, place then we uh, click on uh, net label then we click on tab to edit it and we name it suppose LED 1 we click OK so now we use we connect LED 1 then uh, so that means LED 1 is automatically connected to this uh, net so we'll do it, uh, do it similarly for all these projects You'll notice that LTM automatically uh, increments the counter. So you'll see, I, I, I do not have to do anything. Uh, they uh, simply just change numbers from 1 to 8. Now we'll do that, repeat this process again with this um, LED part. And uh, we'll just similarly protrude the wires again. Cool. Now we uh, do the same thing, go to place, then click on net label. We again edit it and uh, name it LED1. Click OK. Now let's similarly uh, do the same process again. One thing you'll have to make sure is that uh, th these names have to be exactly the same. You cannot even miss out a sim single semicolon or comma or anything. They have to be exactly the same. Otherwise, it, you'll get a compiler error. Uh, so, that uh, what this does is connects this part of the schematic, uh, this part, uh, to this uh, resistance network. So, you don't have to drag wires all the way across your schematic. It makes your schematic a uh, lot neater. Okay, now we'll uh, be uh, going ahead and adding the power supply for this project. Uh, we'll be uh, using a LM7805. It's a very popular uh, 5 volt voltage regulator. We again go to find. Click on 7805. Search again. And select the relevant component. Let's go with this one and we place it anywhere you want uh, exit this mode okay now this is our LM7805 we'll be adding a um, input jack uh, so we'll be using a 2 pin header let's go to parts and it should be under miscellaneous uh, connectors we search for header 2 it's a 2 pin header we go and click OK. Now, a uh, very useful feature is that uh, if you want to mirror a schematic, uh, mirror a component, 
along the Y axis, you'll have to place Y, uh, you have to click uh, Y on the keyboard and we'll just mirror it along the Y axis. Uh, to, do to do it again, you just click y, y one more time. And if you want to mirror it along the X axis, you click on X and uh, just uh, mirror it across the X axis. This is an extremely useful uh, tool. So once you place your component, you just go ahead and add a wire and join this join this part. Now we'll be adding a capacitor. We go to this uh, this this part and we select a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor and we add it like this. We join the wires. And we should be good. Now you'll notice that uh, we have to place a VCC tab here. So the entire power rail of the circuit is connected to this uh, node. So uh, so if you uh, so if I place VCC anywhere else on the circuit, it will automatically get uh, power from this part. And similarly, we do the same for the ground. That is this part. And similarly, the entire circuit will get. Uh, ground supply. So once your power supply is sorted out, you uh, power the chips. So here we'll be just going ahead and connecting the ground to these two and uh, join the wires. And we uh, place a VCC tab here and similarly join all of them. Oh, we wouldn't want to do this one. Let's do it again. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we have the uh, power to the uh, microcontroller set up. And now let's uh, similarly power the bit expander. Uh, VDD will go to ground. And another nifty feature is that uh, if you pre press space bar, it will rotate the component by 90 degrees. So I'll just uh, go to this one, connect ground to this and VCC to this one. Uh, we'll we won't be using interrupts, so we'll just neglect it. Uh, now the reset pin will be going to any uh, any one of these I.O. ports. Then we have the SPI bus. If you don't know what these terms are, you don't really need to worry. These are, this is just tutorial on how to use it, not the actual uh, practical uh, parts of, the, of how to design a schematic. So we'll just connect this to the SPI bus. Um, we'll be using the net label feature again. We go to place. Um, net label and then click tab to uh, edit the component and we click on mossy master out serial in and we connect it to the appropriate pin then uh, we similarly find the mossy pin in this uh, microcontroller and we connect it as well then we have also have miso oops I got it uh, the wrong way around it should be like this Yep, uh, let's connect this wire. Cool. Now, um, similarly, we have to do the same for MISO, that is master in, serial out. We go to um, place, then net label. Click tab again, then MISO. Um, and we'll just do the same for this one. And we'll also need to connect this chip select pin to uh, any digital I.O. port. Uh, okay, so with that, our uh, schematic series is uh, ready. There's a fairly uh, simple design, uh, but uh, this should uh, explain how uh, the schematic editor works. So now we'll, let's go ahead and annotate the schematic. Uh, we go to tools, then annotate schematics quietly. You click on yes, 
to confirm and thereby you have successfully named all your components. So now let's uh, actually go ahead and compile the project. Go to project tab, click on compile. Then to see the compiler report, we go to view, then uh, workspace panel, uh, system, then messages. You'll see it has a uh, few errors. Uh, these errors actually have no sense because Alton Designer, even though it has a very powerful compiler, it does not have actual the gray, uh, does not have the gray matter to actual actually process uh, real time environments. So we'll just neglect this these errors. So that is it. We have successfully designed a schematic on uh, the schematic editor. It is not really that hard. One and uh, it, uh, if you want to learn, it's a very, very powerful tool. So um, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching.